guys have been asking for another derelict. I'm trying, man. They just take a long time to create, so they just don't do as much volume. That's what makes them extra special. Having said that, today we are in a really cool derelict. We've, for some reason, started doing derelict versions of our production vehicles, like the Bronco, the FJ, and the Thriftmaster. This was not a conscious decision. This was based solely on the fact that we actually stumbled into really good examples of, at least thus far, the Bronco and the Thriftmaster, which enabled us to do such a build. So, case in point, today we are in a 1949, not a Thriftmaster, a GMC, same design, same everything, different front clip, minor changes, but the patina on this one was just so perfect that we knew immediately when we found it that's what we needed to do. So did our client, in fact, he commissioned it. In fact, all the way back to he commissioned the hunt for it. So we actually found it on Craigslist and it was almost ideal. The bummer was the previous owner was uh, going to restore it, which meant uh, probably a winter garage project. He started by removing the tailgate and rear fenders and sanding them down to all metal and then like Home Depot rattle cam primer them. But the rest of the patina was so amazing that I was like, all right, Y'all know I'm not into fake patina whatsoever, but the opportunity with this truck was so great, but I'm like, you know what, fine. I'm gonna fake patina those rear fenders and the tailgate. So we did. The guy who does that work for us, just amazing, right? I think if I hadn't told you which panels were faux patina and asked you to call it out, you would not get it. In fact, there are other panels that are faux patina and I'm not gonna tell you until the very end of this video. Let's see if you can figure them out. So, we took advantage of all of the established engineering with the Thriftmaster builds. So, chassis, powertrain, electronics, mechanical, were all in the bag, all worked great, so there was no reason to screw with it. Now, with the derelicts, there's some changes in how we build it that actually end up taking longer than the ones where we do full paint and chrome and everything. Mostly, that added time is because to make it look like you did nothing takes longer than if you have control over everything. You know, then you just hack the panel, you weld it up, you prime it, you paint it, and off you go. But in the case of a derelict, you have to do that in a way that does not impact the original paint on that panel. And furthermore, a lot of the design decisions that work great in, at least I think they do, in our Thriftmaster do not work in a derelict. So case in point, the dash, right? So dash is lovely, you can do all sorts of neat stuff. But my touch, drop, screen, machined, all that stuff, and the gauges I redesigned, and the switches, for that matter, even the seat and the seat hardware and the armrests and all that stuff I've previously geeked out on just wouldn't work right. It wouldn't flow in a derelict. Because again, the idea is to make it look like we did much of nothing. So that was good fun though. In the case of this truck, the dash, we actually used the original gauges that came to us with this barn fine truck, or actually barn fine, then garage fine, then Craigslist, whatever. So they keep the funk and the charm in the original design, but then behind the scenes, our buddy Shannon at Redline redesigned the electronics. So it's all modern, state-of-the-art, reliable goodness, but we didn't touch anything down to the pointers to keep that style authentic. The knobs on the original truck, they're kind of a cool minimalist design, but they're plastic and they don't have what we needed for all the functions that we added to the truck. So we made our own knobs, strongly inspired by the original, and we CNC'd those in stainless, and then we created uh, an inset section where then we paint filled for indication. So super simple dash, you just have lights, fan, vent, and temp. 
hazards are facilitated by the modern steering column. The wipers are in the stock kind of strange location, but we left it stock. Radio, we use the very rare original GMC AM radio, which took us like six months to even find, and we gutted it so it lights up at night, looks like it's gonna work old school, but then the primary knobs excite the Bluetooth and your volume control, and then the tune knob actually controls your bass circuit volume. For speakers, we did the focal units. They're hidden under dash. Because it's such a small cab, we just have two speakers under dash, and then we have the bass unit hidden under this seat. For this seat, it is the original seat, kind of. When we restored the original seat the right way, you sit in the truck and it just sucked. Even with the tilt column with enhanced ergonomics, reduced diameter steering wheel, it was like a rigid 90 degree in my head, and my, I'm not that tall, I'm like 5'11", on a good day. You're like practically hitting your head on the ceiling. So we started all over again, we tore it down to the raw frame, and then we replaced all of the springs with Tempur-Pedic foam, which in turn allowed us to be thinner but still have the gushiness we needed. But then we introduced a little bit of rake to the seat back as well. And a result, I'm quite pleased. And it was just perfect for derelict because it had that patina, but excellent pull up. It's nice and soft and super durable. So the door panels and the seat are all done in that dark navy. And then we, the tuck and roll is in stock. But like the stock door panels were literally a chunk of cardboard, which just was not gonna cut it. And the seat had no like distinct style. So we did a nice simple four inch tuck and roll and then repeated that design on the door panels. The paint on the seat frame is 100% original 1949, for that matter, as is the paint throughout the interior. On the headliner, we did the old school original style, and uh, we did that in the navy blue. For the visors, I just couldn't help myself, so we upgraded those to leather. Some of you, those of you who follow my Instagram feed, know I am a geek for leathercraft. So pretty much my nights and weekends are all about hand stitching stuff, old school analog way. So as a little gift to the client, the tailgate chains on the truck were original and so cool, like perfect patina and the original lasp and hatch. But they make so much noise on these, which is why on the normal Thrift Masters, we delete them and do elbow hinges and a hidden latch. But that, again, would have jumped the shark on the design of this truck. So we left the original ones and then I just hand stitched and burnished uh, sleeves and leather that shut the chains up. For AC, we repurposed the original GMC center dash unit uh, that would have originally housed the AM speaker. And now that handles the center AC vents, high output, and then there's two more hiding under dash. It does a really good job and again, keeps the visuals nice and clean. Ignition switch, uh, when the standard location, we're running the e-stop powered parking brake because it just works so damn well. And you'll see that under the ashtray, under the dash to the right. Uh, steering column was painted to match the original blue patina paint. The steering wheel is custom. It's the one we normally use on the Thrift Masters, but of course we had to patina it, make it a little bit funkier, and then had some extra leather, so we hand-stitched a leather wrap on that wheel. We kept the power windows that everybody loves. We're using the new Relics uh, controllers, which allow us to keep the old school analog looking window switches. But after a stupendous amount of developing, we finally perfected our power window gizmo, as we officially have named it, which allows you to control both windows from the driver's side. So if you're controlling the driver's side, you simply tap for down, tap for up. If you want to drop or raise the passenger side and course with the driver's side, you double tap down or you double tap up. And it's super convenient, I really love it. Um, also on the carpets, we did the German hard garden that we love so much. We keep using it again and again, especially on the one-offs. That came out super nice. And then I guess on the interior, 
that's enough. Um, mechanically, we're running an LS3, so 430 horse, 440 torque. It's the E-Rod version, so it comes with full emissions control and a two-year 50K warranty from GM, which is kick-ass. Running the 4L65E automatic transmission. And then we're running an Art Morrison chassis, of course, with the GT independent front suspension, as well as triangulated four link in the rear with a Curry Strange 9. Uh, limited slip in that rear diff. This is the first derelict to feature the Icon Brembo brakes, which I'm super excited about. You probably, or at least most of you know, Brembo's our brake partner, and we use them on all of our production goodies, but we just now have evolved into running them on pretty much everything we build, unless it's a prohibitive wheel size issue. Speaking of wheels, man, we went round and round and round with these wheels. The custom wheel manufacturer that we've worked with for many years basically told us to piss off. We are too needy and too specific, which kind of sucks, frankly, I think for his brand as well as for ours. But no worries, as often happens, that forces me into coming up with my own solutions which we did. So the same SoCal partners that make the Icon new school and old school wheels now make the Icon derelict and reformer wheels that we often use. So we modified them just a little bit since we're dealing with forgings and castings, right? So we added uh, slots in them to give them a little bit more brake ventilation, although it hadn't been an issue before. We were worried it might be. And then in the case of this truck, we modified them on the mill so that they could receive the original GMC hubcaps. So they look super cool. What took a long time to figure out was what color. So I tried two different blues, one pink, one powder coat, they both sucked. So then we went back and we patinaed them in just a slightly different hue than the rest of the body in the hopes of breaking it up a little bit and not being too overdone. And I think the third time was the charm and it actually worked and panned out and it's quite lovely. I'm really happy with it. We did a taller stance than we normally do on the TRs because this truck is going to be a work truck. It's going to get out there and get it done, get dirty. So really good clearance for dirt roads and for hauling and all that fun stuff. Uh, rack and pinion front power steering. Uh, I don't remember the ratio. I think it's a 16.5 to 1 on this one. Exhaust is all stainless steel. It is dual. It has... Uh, uh, what are they, MagnaFlow, so it's nice and mellow unless you slam your foot into it and then the gates of hell willingly open up and it's good, clean, fun. Chassis, of course, is military spec powder coat finish. The underside of the body is coated in heat cured polyurea. Then there is a copious amount of dynamat lining the doors, the cowl, the cab, the roof, and the floor. So even the trans tunnel, which is a big issue on these old pickups, is totally whisper quiet and body temperature, which is lovely because I hate that when you're in a classic and you're just cooking your ass for people not thinking about that. Bed wood, kind of cool. It is actually old dairy farm wood from Pennsylvania. It is over 100 years of age. You can see the old rough saw cuts when they planed it by hand back in the day. How cool is that? We machine planed them but on the bottom side where you're never going to see it to get the right spec and thickness to fit the truck. The runners on the truck we did not replace with the usual stainless. Those are original to the truck. It's just cool. So we left it alone. Ah boy oh boy oh boy. 
boy. I think that's probably enough. I just wanted to spend a little extra time telling you the story on this truck because it's, it's a one of one. I like to think of them as highly functioning works of art and I hope you and my client do as well. If you have any questions, please reach out. Give us a call old school at 818-280-3333. The website, of course, is Icon4x4. Instagram is Icon4x4. You can find us on other platforms as well. But frankly, Instagram is where the party is at. Thanks again. Be well. Appreciate your attention.